Canto 6. B E F. What a happy breed of men cheered off to war. Geordie, Scouser, Taffy, Scott, and Cockney. Shepherded yon the Cornubian shore by captains of His Highness's Navy. Unfit to fight. First class modern conflict, as when old Roman might, they challenged by naked picked. They sailed around Armorica, dodging periscopic glare. We'll hang out our washing on the Siegfried line, flies through the air. Human paraphernalia, landing at St. Nazaire, where vital lines of communication crisscross precious strings along a nation. Tommy Sumner fingers the dust clo clo coating the farmhouse grey. Bland ketchup, musk, bayonet, rust, hand grenades and Nestle sport volumes while invoking occupants of yesterday. France, September the 13th, 1939. Lancashire's finest. To Belgium's border ordered the East Lanks. The one word whispered in the mess was when, amidst the chassis of Matilda tanks, Captain Andrews reviews his tawny men. Such hardy bunch from Pendle's rugged vale. When coming to the crunch, he knew his lads won't fail. Picking their spades up after tea, some small subsidence to mend. Tom Sumner swivels to Billy, his baby-faced school boyfriend. All this digging is plain silly. These lands we shan't defend. As soon as Jerry turns himself hostile, we'll leave these bloody trenches for the dial. They dug a while and watched the sun conclude ephemeral. The digging done, jigging his gun, Tommy foresaw battle. There's something funny going on tonight. I sense trouble. Teutonica. Oh, that was... Uh, May the 9th, Saint Amon, Les Eaux. May 9th, 1940. Teutonica. The racist faces the decadent West, spermatic as the coming of the spring, when leafy woods are at their loveliest and bowers vibrate with the blossoming, when golden streams soul send set on the scene, when gorgeous glinting beams rebound off each machine. Hitler boards the America, under stars he trundles west, stirring strains of his dear Wagner, lull him to a good hour's rest. Time whirs by, train reaches bunker, his bomb-proof felsel nest. Praying before purpuric bloodshed starts, O oh God of battles, steal my soldiers' hearts. Facing the tranquil Occident, Rommel reclines with wines. Cool, calm, content, his regiment should thunder through the lines. Flicking through Sun Tzu, Von Clausewitz, and Charles de Gaulle's opines. Germany, May the 10th, 1940. Invasion. After shouts of war, the shafts begin to fly. No longer men must idle day long days. The sun was barely half an hour high, and all the lowland borders were ablaze. Wilhelmina rushes across the sea, the crooked swastika denuding majesty. Rules re-writ for modern warfare, pers first possess total surprise, and wholly dominate the air. Through thar then a phalanx flies, cheval de frise and battered bear beneath the stuka skies. Rev, 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 three lines of polished panzer wait as if with Nelson off Trafalgar. King Leopold laments the end of proud neutrality, forced to defend his German friend ravaging his country. Men learn from history, they'll learn nothing from history. Brussels, May the 10th, 1940. Britain stirs. Hi, right, Daisy. I'm still reading. German arms form an arm like corridor, fist punching up through Flanders to the coast. Not wheel to Paris, as lost Bismarck's war, though given up is Gallieni's ghost. Spirit thought dead seizes the Shinque ports. The ghoul songs of the dead blow through abandoned forts. Double rhyme. <laughs> Admiral Ramsay climbed Henry's keep with a Nelsonian stance, gazes across the hoary deep to the distant dark of France, where brave and battle Britons heap some chips upon one chance. Sl slipping back to Blarty via Dunkirk is crazy, and I've got to make it work. For once, the British do not reel before the German gale. From Grand Fort Philippe down to Lille, let fresh defence prevail. From now on, each deep blood lettered inch be fought for, tooth and nail. France, May 27th, 1940. Dunkirk. Panic grips the fabled British army. Her soldiers splintered into shattered shards. Her wounded bench to face the enemy. Her bodies rotting. Her ordnance scrapyards. 
But for one lot, led by Irvine Andrews, whose pure Parthian shot let loose, though they must lose. In soft barn thatch did Tommy hide, with captain and five more men. Beneath them fifteen Germans died, or they'd do them all again. Two poor survivors fled outside, raw scalped by Billy's Bren. Let Scarper boys, young lads fleshly blooded, wade through Flanders wide, Flanders wide fields, fleshly flooded. Long last, the dunes, up piles the kit. Lads, look, just like it's just like Lytham. A Messer Schmidt swoops down to spit death to his old hangman's drum. Then inland hangs, they brush off sand. You won't get them up from. Melo Le Bon, May the 30th, 1940. Air support. As Chaplin preached to them on bended knee, his prayers tumbled out from parching lips. Men laden crafts crept slowly out to sea, in hopeful silence bobbed those linen ships. Firm officers checked chaos with their guns. Form a queue, your blighters, I'll shoot his swine that runs. Shark's head in swinking triumph rolls, its jubilant pilot gloats. At two rickety wooden moles, those pathetic little boats, those cold, exhausted, starving souls grasping for filth that floats. How long until the fewer will prevail? He spies a goofy bird upon his tail. The labours, late night, of boffins, this new spit fire de deploys. Messer Smith spins, wings dorsal, fins, packed beaches, bursting noise. But bleeding term, screams Tommy. Three cheers for them, Bill Cream boys. Mais la May the 31st, 1940. The French at the evacuation. Only Lille deserves the honour of France. Endures a losing battle to the end. La Garde in front of La Belle Alliance would have been glad to call these soldats friend. Full fierce they fought like rigid rocks of Rome, and every second boat some sun sent slavely home. After many an adventure, two Poilu found safety's grace, howling bagpipes called to muster bearded dregs of English race. Out of copious wine cellar fell some drunken, dis drunken disgrace. Together they all stagger through the night. The last few boats were over to a light. Boarding, the patch sink hellier. Henry slips, then falls, and screams out Pierre. Soon oil slick hair and lone ring fingered hand are gone, leaving no trace but shallow footsteps in the sand. Dunkirk, June the 2nd, 1940. Last stanza. Echoes of defeat. Rescued one long day's worth of French soldiers. They'll stretch to baking, breaking point both boat and crew. But as the rear guard reaches the beaches, loud shrieks of British perfidy ensue. They fought to save those footsteps in the sand, all gone across the wave, gone to the promised land. The odious apparatus of the Nazi privateers, we shall fight on fields and beaches, offer high blood, sweat and tears. If the empire of the English should last a thousand years, then let men say this was her finest hour. Churchill's balsam plants Pendragon power. The floating corpse of Paul Le Grand, washed up close by Calais, above huge band of generals stand bedecked in silver and grey, viewing those cliffs, pecking the waves, an eagle surfing spray. France, June the 40th, 1940. It's getting tense.